Okay, hello. Hopefully um, you can hear me. Um, I'm just going live now. I don't know if we have anyone viewing yet or not. But I'll just give you a moment um, just to say a couple of things. Uh, if you want to catch... If you want to catch this evening's webinar, then uh, please do so. If you if you check at the below the webinar page here, you'll find a link to my web page, and you can come and join in the chat, the live chat that we've got going on there, which would uh, be great to see you. Come along, come in, and do say hello. Like I say, below the webinar uh, in the YouTube channel, if you go to uh, check the chat out here. Uh, in the link below this video. Come along and say hello. Good evening, Itoan and Hope. Really nice to have you on board. I'll say hello in the chat. Uh, just to let you know, this is just a, a quick question, NMR, uh, ahead of tomorrow's live webinar and uh, really look forward to seeing everyone who joins us tomorrow night. Evening, Sabrina. I'm just going to say hello in the chat here. Evening, your turn. Like I say, I don't know how many people will have live this evening. Uh, this uh, is the start of some of the quick question sessions that I'm going to do. They're just going to be about 15 minutes in length. They're really to sort of look at a bit of a refresher question. Uh, hello, Sabrina. Good to hear you. Oh, and good to see you even. Uh, here we'll have, um, like I say, a quick question based around some of the topics that we'll be looking at in this week's webinars. Um, this evening's one we're going to do on NMR spectroscopy, and we're just going to simply look through here the uh, NMR question that we've got on the page in front of you. Before we start going through this um, live, just to remind you, if you are watching this, uh, please do click on the link below the video and come along to the quick question page on my website uh, where you'll find the live chat for this session. I know it's late on a Sunday. It's also Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to anyone who's out there. I hope you've been enjoying some chocolate. I've got about seven Easter eggs myself to eat this evening. Okay, I'm going to start in about five or six minutes. Well, no, probably not that long. A couple of minutes. Of evening, Evelyn. Like I say, just a quick preview of tomorrow's webinar on NMR spectroscopy. Thank you, Etoan. Happy Easter. Evening, Elliot. Good to have you on board. I'll go for about one more minute just to let everyone come online. Whilst I'm waiting for people to come online, do have a look at the question here. It says the proton NMR spectrum for C6H12O2 is shown. Deduce the structure of the compound. Hi, Evelyn. Thanks for the smiley face. People coming along as we speak. It's good to see. Hi, Tiak. Apologies if uh, I get anybody's name wrong. All right. As you can see, the links are on the video page here. Come along, drclaysalevelchemistry.com slash quick question. The link is below the YouTube video. As I say, this is the only question we're going to look at in this session. We're going to take about five, ten minutes looking at uh, NMR spectroscopy. And after the session, uh, 
you'll have time to think about it and we'll be live with this uh, tomorrow night for the NMR spectroscopy webinar uh, which will be more about an hour hour and a half long and we'll be looking at lots of proton NMR and also carbon NMR spectroscopy okay We will get this done. Okay. Okay, I'm just saying during there is a private chat function on uh, on this chat, uh, which we're also trialing this evening. Please do not uh, private chat me during the webinar, um, as I will not have time to uh, message you back. Uh, but. Uh, but please do uh, participate in the in the group talk. I will be able to take all of your questions here. All right, let's have a look then at this question. So hopefully you've all had a chance to sit there, have a look at it. It says the proton NMR spectrum here of C6H12O2 is shown to deduce the structure of this compound. And here we've got the NMR spectrum uh, laid out for us. I'm just going to check. I've actually got a pen that's working. I haven't, so I'll get myself a blue pen. Uh, and we'll start off by seeing what information we can glean from this spectrum. First thing to note is we've got one, two, three, four, five different regions or five different peaks. Okay. So that means we've got five different hydrogen environments. And we're going to look at each of those in turn in just a minute. Uh, the other thing to note uh, when we're coming along here are the different types of environments that we've got. Uh, it's not too easy to see, but um, I'll draw them out below. This one on the far left here is what we call a triplet. Uh, the next one along is a singlet. This one here again is a triplet. Here we've also got a quartet. And this bottom one here we've got again a triplet. So that's our splitting patterns that we are observing. Um, you will see in due course, general thing for your exams, if you get a triplet and a quartet, it's a really classic environment that we'll see in a bit for seeing CH2, CH3. So classic observation triplet and quartet in a proton in a mass spectrum means you've got a CH2 and a CH3. We've got to deduce the structure of this compound. So we're going to work through each one in in turn and see if we can work out what it is. What we've also got here is we've got from your data sheet, we've got table B, which is a proton NMR chemical shift data. So make sure uh, that's the one you're looking at. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can work out what this substance is. I'll just try and, there we go, reduce the size here. We're gonna go for each spectrum in turn. Um, and we're going to start off, um, well, let's start off perhaps with the easiest one here. We're going to start off here with a singlet. Uh, this singlet, oh, in fact, sorry, let's start off with the relative intensities. The relative intensities is the area underneath the graph. And I'm going to scribble out each of the peaks. Um, splitting pattern. We'll do these. And I'm going to start from the left and go to the right. So we've got a triplet, we've got a singlet, we've got a triplet, we've got a quartet, 
and we've got a triplet. So those are our five areas. Then the relative intensity as well. Here we've got values. We're starting um, on the left-hand side here with our triplet then. We've got 0 0.8, 1.2, uh, the next one for the triplet is 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8, and 1.2. So to work out the actual ratio, the relative intensity, remember, tells us about the number of hydrogens. So the number of hydrogens here, if we divide by the smallest number, so if we divide each of these by 0 0.8 here, what we're going to end up with is 1 1.5, 1, 1, and 1.5. So ratio that is up to get whole numbers. What we actually have is a number of hydrogens is 2 to 3 to 2 to 2 to 3. First thing to note, if I add these up, I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is the correct number of hydrogens uh, for my compound. Let's look at the positions then of each of these. So let's go with my singlet. My singlet here is at two, is at about 3.2. This is what we call the shift in PPM. So if I look up my shift here of PPM, I'm at 3.2. Well, that one sits quite nicely here with something next to an O group. We know that it's got three hydrogens, so I know that this is going to be O CH3, because it's a hydrogen. It's three of them connected to a carbon next to an oxygen group. Let's move to the next one. Well, let's go up here. We're at 3.2, 3.4, about 3.5. The shift there. I'll shift at 3.5. Well, that probably sits quite nicely in the same sort of region. So what we're probably looking at here, again, is an oxygen. But this time, rather than CH3, we're a CH2 group. We know it's CH2 because of the relative number of hydrogens. We now move down to this triplet, where we say we've got two hydrogens. And we're at now 2.2, about 2.6. As I look at my data sheet, well, 2.6, what could it be? Well, it can't be the amine. And uh, the only one really that we can have here at 2.6 is probably this one here next to our carbonyl group. So this is telling us that we've got a C double bond O and we've got a CH2 because we've got two hydrogens. The next one here we've been told is a quartet. And that's got a value here about... Sorry, is another, it's not, it's a, it's a quartet with a value of two hydrogens, and this is a value of about 2.4. Again, the shift, the only reasonable one that we can actually pick out, because it can't be an ROH or an RNH2, because there's no nitrogens and there's no alcohols in this group, is again another C, double bond O, CH2 group. And the final one here, which is a triplet, uh, which is here, and it's got a value of about probably about 1.0. Well, if we look at our values, that sits in nicely here for our CH3. So we've got a CH3 group bonded to an R group. Remember the other thing that I said is a classic uh, splitting is for a triplet and a quartet here to be a CH2 and a CH3. Um, the only one which we've got, we can't have this as a CH3, so this one here must be identifiable as a CH3 connected to a CH2. I'm now just going to number these uh, as black. I'm going to number these um, 5, This is now my carbon number one, or hydrogen's number one, sorry. 
the quartet. One of these would be my hydrogen number two. I'm then going to work out what's next to that. Well, that, that come must be next to a C double bond O. So here we go. This must be C double bond O. Now I'm going to do this one in blue because there's no hydrogens for that C double bond O. The next one along then, as we move across, has got to be it's got to be a CH2 here. So this here is our CH2, and this is going to be our CH2 from number three. The next one along is our, well, it's not actually going to be our singlet here. Our next one along is going to be next to a carbon oxygen. It's another CH2. And that is our carbon number five. And then our final option here as we come along uh, is going to be bonded to, well, we've got to have an oxygen. The oxygen is not going to be in the spectrum. And finally, with CH3 here is giving us carbon number four. Sorry, I'm saying carbons. What I actually mean there, of course, in all of this is our hydrogens. OK, so there we go. There's our first question here on proton NMR. We are going to be seeing lots more of these tomorrow night in our live webinar, which is going to cover both proton NMR and carbon NMR. And I really look forward to seeing as many of you there as possible. Um, if you want to check out my site, do so at uh, drclays-alevelchemistry.com, uh, where you'll also find uh, a list of all of these quick questions. Um, if you've got any questions now, please do feel free. I'll be around in the chat room uh, for about five minutes if you want to ask me any questions about the site um, or, or anything like that. Thanks a lot. Happy Easter. Have a really good night and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.